Hey, good morning guys. It's Rick and Lisa here and uh, looks like the uh, rain clouds have come in. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, and the, uh, the rains have followed, but that's not going to stop us. We're going to get out and head over to the uh, Florida RV Mega Show here in Jacksonville and go check out some of the uh, Airstreams and campers they have over there. So uh, let's, uh, let's head on out and uh, come along. Come along. Definitely tell the wind is uh, blowing pretty good today. It's a little chilly out here by the water. Yeah, it is. They, I, I thought it was supposed to be sunny in Florida. <laughs> well, not, not during this winter, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess it is February, so I can't complain. But uh, here, let me get the truck unlocked for you. The weather's not the best. A little cloudy and overcast. Hopefully we'll uh, beat the rain, but we got our umbrella though, don't we? We do. We got our umbrella. We got our tickets. We're ready to go in. All right. The map out here. Okay. We and, just uh, came in here. So right here? Yeah. We just came in here. Yep. The air streams are... Okay. So we got to go up this way and then around yep, and then right here. should be back out in, in that in corner, corner over there. So Let's I think find we're going to... air streams. So far it looks like the rain's uh, holding off for us, doesn't it? Yeah. Just a little sprinkles when we got here. Yeah, so I think we kind of lucked out. Other than being a little cloudy, I think we're going to miss out on most of the rain. That's good. But it's uh, definitely starting to get busier around here. No, definitely. Uh, they got all kinds of campers here, but we're here to look at Airstreams. Looks like we found the Airstreams. Yeah, we did. So it uh, looks like they've got a pretty base. small selection here to look at. They got the uh, base camp. Base camp. Looks like they got a 25 foot flying cloud. They got an international, which looks like uh, 27 foot, and uh, another flying cloud down here. And uh, let me see, I'm not sure what this last one is. That last one looked like a 30 foot cl uh, flying cloud. So we're going to yeah. check these out and uh, kind of talk with you about what we think are probably the five critical questions you need to ask yourself when you're looking to buy an Airstream. You want to start with the base camp? Yeah. Oh, it's locked. We can't go in it. Just there. Uh, for Airstream. Oh, oh there you thank go. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if they have any lights or anything that we can turn on in here. It didn't look like it was hooked up to electricity. Yeah. So, so it's a little bit dark in here. But uh, what do you think? Is this something you could see yourself camping in? Camping, yes. Living, no. Oh, you do have lights. Oh, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Hey, what's your uh, name? Kyle. Kyle, nice to meet you, nice Kyle. To meet you. Yeah. My name is Rick. This is my wife, Lisa. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah, to meet you. I'm running fully off solar right now. It's 300 okay. watts on the roof of this unit. So, okay. Yeah, All right. I just wanted to cut that off. Is this, the, is this the, this isn't the 20 foot model, it though. It is the 20. Yeah. It is the 20. The 16 has the front kitchen. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Because it accounts for, I think, about 30% of all, all Airstream sales. Which I think was a bit surprising. Yep. I want to come check on y'all. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We got a screen door here, you know, I'm sure, as well in the front. Very nice. So, Lisa, you said you could camp in this, but you wouldn't want to live in it? I would not want to live in this, yeah. Okay, maybe. Not not, I would not want to live in this full time, yeah. How long could you? Do you think you could live in this? A month? You could do 30 days? Um, hmm. You can do anything for 30 uh, days. Yeah, you can do anything for 30 days. You would have to use a bathhouse, though. Yeah. So what kind of a bathroom do they It has have? a wet bath. Yeah, it does. Yeah. But I think, you know, 30 days, I think you could, uh, you could survive in this. I think survive is not the right word you could live in this for 30 days yeah I, I would agree with you i probably wouldn't want to be in here for longer than that I'm trying to so find over the, here's the refrigerator that's what i was trying to find oh yeah. there's the refrigerator okay and you got a microwave yeah not a big refrigerator but it's not bad about the size of a dorm yeah refrigerator. dorm refrigerator Actually, it's not bad. We could we could do thirty days in this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're inside the twenty foot uh, base camp airstream, and it's very spacious. Actually, um, 
I think, uh, you know, as we're kind of looking around in here, it's, it's a really nice option for those folks that are looking for an Airstream at a, a little bit more affordable price, but also still want to have enough space and capability to go out for extended camping trips. I think as Lisa and I were looking uh, inside of this, I think we both decided that you could probably live in this, I, I think 30 days, yeah. you know, as a couple. Now, if you start adding kids and pets, it's going to get a little bit crowded. As a single person, if you wanted to travel and work from the road, I think you could easily live in this full time. Full time. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think it's a great option. And surprisingly, it is the best selling uh, Airstream model and floor plan that uh, Airstream makes right now, according to their 2022 sales data. Yeah. So um, definitely a nice option. It is. Something that uh, if you're looking to just get out on weekends or maybe extended road trips, you know, as a family, you could easily do it in this. If you're looking to full time in it, I think you have to be a single traveler, a solo traveler. I think that'd probably be the best option for you yeah. on this as well. You know, if you are looking to buy an Airstream, you know, Lisa and I have kind of talked about, you know, what are those questions that you need to ask yourself? And I think it really comes down to five fundamental questions. And I think the first one that you've got to ask yourself is your budget. Definitely. Yeah. Well, you know, what is the budget that you can afford? And, uh, you know, still be able to have the lifestyle that you want to have. And then I think the second question you got to ask yourself, and probably no particular order, is what's your camping style? You know, do you plan on being, you know, a luxury RV park camper? Do you plan on going to national parks and state parks? Um, do you plan on boondocking? I think that is the next question of what's your camping style and, and how do you plan on using your Airstream? I think the third question that probably comes up would be asking um, what's the frequency of use that you plan on using your Airstream? Are you going to full time or are you going to part time? Are you just going to do a weekend warrior type trips? Um, I think that is another factor that you really need to consider whenever you're looking at an Airstream. Yeah. What do you think? I think so. Yeah, because you know, and, and it's also going to depend on the size the of size, family yeah. that you have is going to dictate, well, I could full time in this as a solo traveler, but if I'm a family man, I probably need a 30 foot yeah. you know, bunk with the bunk, yeah. with the bunk house. I think the next question that you have to ask yourself, what are those amenities that you need to have? Um, do you need to have a hatch so you can load up equipment? Do you need to have a dry bath? Maybe a wet bath isn't what you're looking for. Um, you know, are you going to work from the road? Do you need to have an office? Those are just a few of the features that, you know, you could ask yourself, you know, do you want 30 amp or 50 amp? You know, do you need, are you going to be camping in a hot, humid climate where you need to have two, two air, air conditioners? conditioners? Right. Are you going to so, be boondocking a lot? Do you need solar? Yeah, absolutely. And, and those are all features that you can have upgraded and added to your, to your rig, but they all come at a cost. Um, and I think the fifth question that you probably need to ask is, um, what type of tow vehicle capability is it going to require? Um, or do you already have the appropriate tow vehicle? You know, do I already have a half ton truck for probably a 25 foot and smaller Airstream? Do I have a three quarter ton truck for anything that's probably 27 foot and larger uh, to tow? So, you know, again, those aren't necessarily decisions on the type of Airstream, uh, but it, it, it does kind of play into that with the decision of the tow vehicle that you have. Because if you buy an Airstream that your tow vehicle can't tow, then you're going to end up having to spend money on a new tow vehicle. But I think those are the five fundamental questions that, that need to be asked. And um, if you can answer those questions, I think you're on the right glide path to selecting the right Airstream for you. Um, well, let's go look at the other Airstreams they have here and show them what they could possibly afford and want. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. Let's go. All right. So this is what this is. So it looks like we got a 25 foot, foot queen front bedroom Airstream. And they've got this thing cloud. listed at uh, basically $100,000. I guess this would be the number three selling floor plan. Oh, really? Yeah. So the base camp is number one. Uh huh. Num Overall, number two is the 27-foot front bedroom 
um, floor plan. And then the 25 foot uh, front bedroom floor plan comes in second after the 27 foot. Okay. And really, if you look at this compared to our 27 foot, the, the design is almost identical as far as the layout, except a little bit smaller form factor. The the closet's going to be a little bit shorter. Yeah. Your pantry's going to be a bit yeah. smaller. Um, oh yeah, and doesn't have the microwave. And then the bedroom has got a queen size bed. Ours has the twins, so this bed is going to be turned sideways. Yeah. So with the smaller form factor, you're losing about two foot of space and storage, but this 25 foot. Uh, trailers is potentially going to be advantageous if you're wanting to camp especially in national parks and state parks because yeah. some of those won't allow rigs any bigger than say 25 feet you know what are your thoughts on this one it's nice it's very nice it'd be nice to sleep next to your partner it is we do have the twin beds which is something that we decided to sacrifice because of the walkway yeah we just found that it provided us more usable space and whenever we're uh, traveling full time. Yeah. But uh, if you want to open up the shower here, and very this, similar to what we already yeah, have. Yeah, this one has the shower with the with the latrine across from yeah. it. I'm five foot nine and I fit in the shower fine. I don't have any problems. Now, if you're a taller person, do you want to push the door over this way? Yeah, the bathroom, the toilet is very similar. So with the flying cloud, their finishes aren't quite as elaborate. Or, and yeah, I'm I think, not sure if it, they're as deep or go back as far. Yeah, I think they're a little shallower. I, I guess the just for the you know people that are interested, the flying cloud trim model is 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 kind of more of the entry level trim model. Then it goes to the international. Then it goes, of course, to the globe trotter, and then you can get top of the line, which is the classic. Yeah. So. The fit and finish in here is all very nice. Oh, it's very pretty, yeah. But it's probably not going to be quite to the same level of yeah. um, detail and so forth as some of the other trim models. Very nice. It is very nice, though. But all Airstreams are very beautiful. You know, and that's a great point, Lisa, is that Airstream is a premium brand. It so, is. So, you know, you're, you're paying for that quality, for that uh, durability for that functionality. So, you know, whichever model you do choose is gonna be a, a great choice. Yeah. So this one here, Lisa, is a uh, 25 foot international, but uh, the biggest, biggest difference between this one and the flying cloud we just looked at is this has the twin bedroom. Oh, okay, yeah, and you can see it's the international because it's got the sliding, the sliding doors yeah. and the the, the uh, fit and finish, a little bit different, you know, yeah. a little bit uh, higher quality uh, fixtures, solid surface countertops and everything. So very nice. But basically same form factor with the exception of the twin beds. Looks like somebody's coming back here and kind of taking a nap. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the salesmen have been coming back here, you know, taking a nap. <laughs> Instead of an oven, they also have a convection microwave oven. The other one had a, just a regular oven. Yeah. And then they've got the uh, refrigerator here as well. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Again, just like the other models, they have the split bathroom with the shower on the one side and the uh, toilet and lavatory on the other side. And, and this, this one's going to run you about $124,000 is what they're showing as the list price. Yeah. So this next Airstream we're going into is a 27 foot flying cloud, but this one has the rear hatch, as you can see, which is a great feature. I sometimes wish we had this in our Airstream. Yeah. Uh, just for the ability to be able to load stuff in and out. Um, yeah. Or if you just wanna open it up and enjoy some of the fresh air and the outdoors. But yeah. uh, again, this is just like ours, it's a 27 foot, with the twin beds ours is an international this one here of course is the flying cloud so you're going to get a little bit different trim package but definitely like the twin bed features um, just the ability to walk in here and you have what seems to be a bit more space the other nice feature about the twin beds is you have storage underneath each one of the mattresses so you can put uh, clothing or whatever else you need to, and they have this on both sides. 
as well as then you have this nightstand here that you can use as well as you have these two little side closets at the end of each bed yeah and uh, as well as then you have the bigger twin closet right back here which surprisingly you can put a lot of clothes in mm -hmm. here and I think that's probably the reason why we chose this floor plan for us yeah because it did meet our requirements as far as space and comfort and functionality yes and all those other things so all right so I think this is gonna be the last Airstream we're gonna look at this is the and what is this one the Lisa? 30 foot bunkhouse yeah so this is uh, this is really getting up into size now yeah so it's got the uh, front queen bed which would be very nice I think if we were to ever uh, move uh, up in size yeah. we'd probably go to a 30 foot but we wouldn't get the bunkhouse of course because we don't have any kids with us but we would probably go for the office yeah and then you've got the separate dining area here and then you've got the couch area here which is very nice and then you've got the uh, the kitchen galley area on this side mm -hmm. and the refrigerator over here and then in the back corner is the, bunk. the, the bunks which in the office version it's just the they turn this into an office space yeah yeah so that that would be and here's the, the bathroom now this isn't a split bathroom this is actually a complete bathroom where you have the shower here and then the the toilet and the sink but a, another great option uh, if you're looking at an airstream all right guys so that's going to do it for today's video hopefully you enjoyed these uh, five tips on questions you need to ask yourself when you're looking to buy a new airstream again this is just our thoughts and uh, hopefully they help you in deciding what airstream is right for you but if you like this content please consider subscribing to our channel also give us a thumbs up and if you haven't already done so please uh, leave a comment below we'd be uh, interested in hearing what you have to say and uh, if we don't hear from you hopefully we'll see you down the road see you down the road